Good morning and a very warm welcome to our service of Holy Communion today, the second Sunday in Lent, and also welcome to those of you who are watching on live stream. You are indeed most welcome. As we gather as God's people in this place to receive Holy Communion and those at home spiritually, we prepare by saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the wilderness we find your grace. You love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out and our guilt is great. Christ, have mercy. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Restore us and we shall know your joy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect of the Second Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant to all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book Genesis. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to stumble. He who watches over you will not sleep. Behold, he keeps watch over Israel, shall neither slumber nor The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. It is he who shall keep your soul. The Lord shall keep watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. A reading from the letter to the Romans. What are we to say who gained by Abraham? our ancestor according to the flesh. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works trusts him, who justifies the ungodly, such faith is reckoned as righteousness. 
for the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. 
just as the Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yesterday, the bishop gathered the confirmation candidates for this year for a, an event in Cork with him yesterday. And part of the event was a session with him and with other clergy and with the organist from St. Finbar's Cathedral. And the whole point of it really was so that the candidates would have an opportunity to meet with the bishop in an informal way before they have to go through the formality and all the nervousness associated with being on show at their actual confirmation service. Part of the day involved the children being broken up into five groups and they each did five different sessions, one of which was music, which was done by Peter Stobart, the organist from St. Vinbar's Cathedral. And every year, the candidates get to pick a hymn that will be sung at every confirmation service. And this year was no exception. The only issue is that it is not known to us. So Barry very kindly is going to play the tune of this new hymn during Holy Communion today. It's a modern hymn and it is lovely. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So I was helping Peter in his session and therefore I had to go through five sessions of the same. So I know the hymn very well now. But during one of the sessions, somebody else suggested it would be a good idea if somebody made up a dance. Um, somebody did, and we all did the dance. And some of my colleagues took out their phones and filmed me in particular doing the dance. So. Do not be alarmed if you see somebody, particularly me, doing a very appalling dance to that hymn. Um, it was all in a good cause. <laughs> of course, confirmation is part of the journey for our young people. And as Killian and Finn prepare to make their confirmation, we pray for them and their family, and indeed for all the candidates in all the parishes. When we think of journey, it's Lent is the thing, isn't it, that comes to mind immediately. We call Lent a journey or a pilgrimage. We try and model it on the time that Jesus spent in the wilderness, the 40 days and 40 nights, resisting temptation. But also when we think of journeying, our Old Testament reading today reminds us of the first great journey in scripture. Abraham came from a very different culture, a culture in which many gods were worshiped. He was the first of his kind to acknowledge the one true God. And when God, the one true God, called Abraham and said, Abraham, I want you to go from where you live in Ur in the Chaldees, about 200 miles west of Beirut, out in that direction. And I want you to go to, up to Galilee, to Canaan. Sometimes when we hear that being read, oh yeah, okay, so he went. That's a vast journey of 700 miles across unhospitable ground with his family, his herd, his flocks, everything he had. Living in a settled community, to become a nomad and to wander from oasis to oasis until he finally arrived where God had called him to be. And we remember 
Abraham not only in our own tradition but also in Islam and Judaism as Father Abraham, the first to call upon the name of the one true God. Abraham was rewarded for his faithfulness. And in the same way that Abraham made a physical journey, the discussion between Jesus and the Pharisee Nicodemus is talking about a spiritual journey. We are born of our mothers, and that is being born of water or the flesh, as Jesus says. And then when we are baptized, we are born of the Spirit. So in the same way that we begin our earthly journey from our time of birth, so we begin our spiritual journey at our time of baptism. It's a wonderful encounter because sometimes in the scriptures we get the idea that all of the scribes and Pharisees hated Jesus. Nicodemus had to be careful because he was a very important Pharisee. We're told by St. John that he was a member of the Sanhedrin, which was a 23-person council, and they were in charge of all the legalities to do with the Jewish people. And of course, as we know, they were in collaboration with the Roman occupiers. And so he was in a very delicate position. And so he went at night. But two other times in St. John's Gospel, nowhere in Matthew, Mark or Luke, but only in St. John, do we encounter Nicodemus again. The next time, is when Nicodemus appeals to the Sanhedrin not to condemn Jesus without, first of all, hearing what he has to say. And then at the end of St. John, where Nicodemus is one who brings spices and herbs to anoint Jesus' dead body. It's a wonderful encounter because it reveals to Nicodemus the nature and the love of God as given by Jesus. It opens his eyes. And may our prayer be on our Lenten journey as we model ourselves on Jesus, that we too would have our eyes opened, that we would be more faithful as we walk in the footsteps of Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. Let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living <coughs> whose kingdom must have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. And our prayers this morning, which are led by Jim, are in the form of the litany. In the power of the Spirit, in union with Christ, 
Let us pray to the Father. Hear our prayers, O Lord our God. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Enlighten Paul, our bishop, and all your ministers with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, good Lord. Give us your grace to hear and receive your word, and to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Hear us, good Lord. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, good Lord. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted. Raise up the fallen and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, good Lord. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, good Lord. And you, our politicians, with wisdom and understanding. Hear us, good Lord. Bless those who administer the law, that they may uphold justice, honesty, and truth. Hear us, good Lord. Give us the will to use the fruits of the earth to your glory, and for the good of all creation. Hear us, good Lord. Bless and keep all your people. Help, help and comfort the lonely the bereaved, and the oppressed. Lord, have mercy. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Lord, have mercy. Heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless and the hungry and the destitute. Lord, have mercy. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Lord, have mercy. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed their faith and those whose faith is known to you alone, and grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Amen. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you, also with you.
At the Eucharist, we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors, but we who redeemed and brought forth from slavery to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is here with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate the feast. Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, and fills our prayers. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to overcome all our temptations. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted that in his holy gospel, commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Except through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving spirit that we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Taken away the sins of the world, happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
creator of heaven and earth, we thank you for these holy mysteries given us by our Lord Jesus Christ, by which we receive your grace and are assured of your love, which is through him now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ, draw you to himself and grant that you find in his cross a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.